Hello Falcons fans, J. Michael Moore here from AtlantaFalcons.com. First, I want to thank you all for submitting your questions via Voices Heard on AtlantaFalcons.com over the past few days. I put up that question gathering widget and I'll leave it up on up to the start of Wrestle Falcons training camp on August 1st and I'll be popping in every now and then to answer some of the top rated questions. So remember, ask your questions and vote up your favorite questions. Vote down the ones that have already been answered or the ones that you just eh, don't think are very good questions and not really worth my time to answer. There's not such thing as a bad question, but please use that because it's there for you to try to make sure the best questions do get answered. And we'll be using it throughout the season on AtlantaFalcons.com. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to answer a few of the top-rated questions now. If I don't get to them, it doesn't mean I won't get to them through the next month or so. I'm going to kind of pace through and make sure that I give all of them some good answers along the way. First one, BTRAM4 asks, which rookies have the potential to start and have the biggest impact on the season? That's a great question. I think it probably wouldn't be as big of a question if we didn't see what we did last year with the Atlanta Falcons with five rookies getting starting or key roles in terms of Chevis Jackson and Harry Douglas, if you want to consider those guys starters at the third corner and third wide receiver. So this is a team that has shown it's not afraid to put rookies on the field. Look at what happened with Matt Ryan and Curtis Lofton and Sam Baker last year and how well they did in all of that adversity and all the pressure. So when it comes to this year, I think first you have to look at Parade Jerry and William Moore, the first two guys, the one and two draft pick. Both defensive players, both at positions of need that the Falcons look to address early and often. I think Jerry has the upper hand just because he is a first-round guy, and that's a spot where the team is going to rotate through a lot of people during training camp. And he fits a role there in terms of a pass rusher at defensive tackle, and pass rush is the one thing the team is really going to work at. William Moore, and then also you've got Christopher Owens there, the third-round pick at cornerback. Those guys are in a position, the secondary, that there's going to be a lot of competition. So they're going to get their chance to start, although Thomas DeCou and guys like Brent Grimes, Chevis Jackson, they're guys who are already there, going to be working hard through training camp. So that's where a hot competition is going to be as well. Next question, did Coach Smith show any 3-4 looks at OTAs? And if he did, what players are in that formation? Well, First of all, we're not going to report about what we see at practice, and that goes through a lot of different media organizations. You can go anywhere, and coaches really frown upon reporting exact formations and all of that stuff. So I will say, though, there has been talk about 3-4, and Thomas Dimitrov did discuss it in a one-on-one with him. I had with him before the draft, and it is a possibility, and you can see where the team drafted with maybe a few guys in mind for that. You've got Spencer Atkins, a guy who's a rush linebacker at Miami. Going to get a lot of looks on special teams, but he's a guy who fits that mold as maybe a 3-4 outside linebacker rush guy. Croy Bierman, a guy some people think can stand up and play that role. John Abraham has done it in the past. And, of course, Lawrence Sidbury, the fourth-round draft pick, is a guy who a lot of people think could have played linebacker at the NFL, but really more of the defensive end, and that's where the team has been working him. So the beauty part about a 3-4 is that when you think about what the Falcons can do and with how well Jamal Anderson can be at a 3-4 defensive end type, they can show that look without calling a timeout or without calling throwing in a different sub package. They can actually present a 4-3, drop back the ends, and Jamal Anderson and Jonathan Babineau, the two guys who would be on the outside at that point most likely, they can play 3-4 3-4 defensive end. So that's where it becomes an advantage for the Falcons is how they can show a 4-3 look and then immediately drop into a 3-4 and really throw offenses for a loop. Thanks to Dave Archer, Falcons analyst, to uh, kind of turn me on to that one. We had a pretty lengthy discussion about it back during mini camp. So that's something to watch once we get into training camp and preseason games. BKB42, is William Moore winning the strong safety position battle? Hard to tell who's winning a position battle at this point. The team didn't work in pads through minicamp or through organized team activities, and they're all non-contact. I will say that William Moore really impressed me with his strength, with his size, ability to close on the ball. Obviously, he's going to have a learning curve in terms of coverage and really sticking with a man on certain things. But if he gets beat, he closes quickly, and he's strong enough to pop the ball out of the receiver's hands. So that position battle is an interesting one because Thomas Deku is more of a free safety and is playing free safety. And Eric Coleman, who started a free safety last year, can play both positions. And then you've got William Moore, 
who Thomas Dimitrov said is probably a strong safety type. So it's really a three-way battle there to kind of see who maybe fits and maybe the combination of the two safeties that determines who's going to get on the field, not so much the individual play, although William Moore has looked good. Next question looks like a three-part question. Is Thomas Brown 100% healthy? Yes. I'll go ahead and wrap that one up right now. After injuring his uh, groin, I believe, in training camp last year, that last preseason game, he's come back after being on IR and is working well with the team. And is he going to get some of the playing time of the preseason or regular season? That's interesting because Jason Snelling and Thomas Brown had a very tight battle in training camp last year to see who was going to be the number three running back. And when Thomas Brown went down, Jason Snelling, who might have won the job anyway, you don't really know what happened, he inherited that spot, and it just became his. Although, like I said, he could have well won it anyway. It was a very good competition. So this is interesting this year because will the team keep four running backs? They kept three last year on the active roster, one on the practice squad. But with Thomas Brown's ability as a kick returner, it could be an instance where you'd have four running backs. So there may not end up being as much of a competition there for a roster spot if Coach Smith and Mike Malarkey decide to keep four running backs. DJ Shockley going to get a fair chance this preseason to move to the number two quarterback spot so he can back up Matt Ryan. I'm hearing a lot of questions about quarterback, and obviously Mike Smith will say there's an open competition everywhere. That is the truth, except for maybe quarterback, and he did make that uh, clarification because of Matt Ryan and how well he did last year. He is the starting quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. But there will be an open competition behind him from Chris Redman, DJ Shockley, John Parker Wilson, who was signed as an undrafted free agent. Those three are going to kind of open it up. They're going to get a lot of reps in training camp because the team now knows what Matt Ryan can do, and you'll see him take on more of the role in the preseason as a starting quarterback in other parts of the league, the way Peyton Manning normally looks, some guys who you know what you've got, they know what kind of reps they need to get, so you're going to see a lot more in the preseason with those backup quarterbacks. So look for G.J. Shockley to get some reps in the preseason, and then it is an open competition behind that, and the best man will win to see who backs up Matt Ryan. The next question we will answer today. So we all know Ryan has good chemistry with number 84, 84 being Roddy White. Have you seen an increase in comfortability with receivers? Or comfort, comfortability, great, great word. I'm not sure if that's a real word. Between Ryan and any other of the receivers, i.e. Tony Gonzalez. Yes, Matt Ryan has commented at length during his meetings with the media and OTAs and minicamp about how comfortable he is this year with his various receivers, including Roddy White. And Tony Gonzalez, maybe it's because he was new. Matt Ryan called him the, the new toy that he got to work at in minicamp. He got a lot of looks during minicamp. And again, that might be more just getting familiar and them testing each other out to see what they got. But accuracy is one thing that Matt Ryan has worked on, and he's gotten that by spending extra time with his receivers during the offseason. So you will see that comfort factor raise in year two, especially on timing which is, is a timing offense. A lot of the routes that are run are called speed routes. They're just real quick in and out of cuts. So it's all about timing, and that's where the quarterback-wide receiver relationship comes into play. Going to try to get one question in. Which rookies are really impressing the coaches? Steve is Nicholas looking good. Is Thomas Brown going to be used in the running game? Well, I already talked about Thomas Brown. Always talk, always talked about the rookies, but I will say Stephen Nicholas is a guy that coaches have been wanting to get on the field since he was drafted. You won't find a better guy on the on the team either. Such a nice person, such great character. You read on ESPN.com a few weeks ago what he did, what he had to go through with his son surgery last season and his son being in a hospital in Boston. Just a fantastic heartwarming warming story. He's now got a chance to compete for a starting job. He's one of the most athletic players on the field, especially at a linebacker position. And without that weighing on his mind, look for big things out of Steven Nicholas, especially during the preseason and training camp as he tries to really show off, really show what he can do and lock down that job early. And he's a very humble guy. I talked to him early in the offseason. And he's going to keep everything in perspective. And he's going to work hard. And he's going to be there for his teammates. And that's really what you want out of a guy, especially a linebacker with so much passion, so much energy at that position. So Steven Nicholas looking good and my guy personally to watch in training camp and preseason. I'm running out of time here, but that's going to wrap it up for the first question and answer session. Look for more here on the blog, more on YouTube, and more on AtlantaFalcons.com. Take care.